Hey there YouTube, this is Shua Hendry with another drawing tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about line weight and I'm going to be using both a pencil and a ballpoint pen to demonstrate this concept. Um, line weight refers to basically how hard you're pressing down with the tool or maybe how many times you repeat a line. Uh, you can go from a light, medium to a heavy line weight and each thing kind of serves its own purpose. Uh, I like to teach my students to start out with a light line weight. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm going to just kind of rotate this page a little bit. And I'm just going to draw a simple cube. And uh, I teach my students to draw relatively quickly, trying to make your lines with one motion as opposed to sketching, uh, which tends to make kind of hairy lines. Um, so you can see that's really, in, in, in all truthfulness, that's really about a medium line weight. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along uh, now that I've drawn kind of those guidelines, and I'm going to come along this back edge and this bottom edge with uh, a heavy line weight. And a lot of times if you're doing a line drawing, a heavy line weight can serve to represent maybe a, a shadowed or a heavier object along the bottom edge. Uh, so you usually thicken that up and then where light might be hitting, you could go to a very light line weight, almost to invisible, and uh, that will kind of help you. Uh, sort of correlate that. Now you can also accomplish this with a ballpoint pen. Um, if I just do a couple of quick lines here, 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 and there. And then come back and kind of darken this in. Maybe I'll make that a medium line weight and then really kind of go over this a couple of times to darken it in, make it nice and thick and and accomplish a heavy line weight. Now this was a really simple kind of sample here. This is the ballpoint pen, this is the graphite. Um, really simple example of how to accomplish just uh, a little bit of three-dimensional quality without actually having to shade, just using line weight. Uh, it comes more into play uh, when you're doing figure drawing or perhaps you were going to draw a person here, uh, maybe their face. So all of this I'm doing in a very light line weight because I'm not 100% confident of the marks I'm making yet. I'm really doing this just to kind of get a feel for what this drawing, the, the, what it's going to do as I, as I go. Okay. Now, this is a really cool technique. In tight spaces, kind of like I think about right here where the ear meets the head, I think, I think about that as being a little bit darker area. And I also start my marks in that little area that's the darkest and I pull my lines out so they actually are very thick in there where it's nice and dark and they get thinner as they come out like say to the earlobe and as they go around here then where it comes back into the where the hair meets meets up there again I will start my pencil or my pen there and then pull the lines out from there so that you get these little bit this really subtle kind of dark areas in there and then pull it out to a lighter bit and that transition from dark to light really helps to accentuate uh, the shape of the jaw, the ear, or whatever the whatever the shape might be. This works with vehicles, it works with buildings, it works with anything. Uh, but the technique being is that you start with your pencil in the dark areas, press down, and then very quickly kind of pull out your color. And usually there's some shading underneath the chin comes down on the neck, it represents the shape of the chin here as it comes down on the neck. And even as I'm shading, I'm thinking about the shape of the neck being kind of round. Um, and so I'll get it a little bit darker along the edges and bring it to a little bit lighter here around the throat area. Even though I'm shading it in, I'm still thinking uh, that even within that shadowed area, there are going to be some darker and some lighter areas. Closer to the chin, obviously, it's going to be darker. Less light is able to get there, uh, right where the throat comes up and, and meets up with the base of the, uh, or the underside of the jaw. Um, so that's going to be a little bit darker. Then as more light is able to uh, hit on the neck, as you also might get some reflective lighting uh, popping in there under the chin. 
You start to see a little bit of that. And you know it's unique, but when you're when you're drawing people, sometimes it's nice to let the shadows define the line as opposed to like a heavy line weight. Like along the outside here, I've kind of let my line define the shape. But when you get to a, the chin or something like that, and you have another uh, backdrop or something, uh, for instance, this darker area under here, allowing that to define the shape of the chin as opposed to drawing a really dark line. Sometimes when you're doing people, that has a better effect. Um, than actually drawing a really dark line. At least I think it does. Uh, under the lip here you usually have a little bit of shadow and then it kind of can come into the shape of the chin a little bit. So, And again I'm going to use that technique usually at this little crease in the mouth right here uh, will be a little bit darker and so I'll start my pencil there or my pen there and then pull the line away from that. And usually at the corners of the mouth, you also are going to have a little bit of a darker area at the corners of the mouth. And so you can kind of do the same thing. And that just gives it a little bit more pop, a little more punch. And depending on how old the person is, uh, also uh, depends. You might actually have some of the, uh, the, the wrinkles that start to form uh, here around the nose as they get older. Uh, you're going to notice more of those wrinkles and give you a little bit more area for those dark spots. You can kind of do that same thing there. But you, if you overdo it, you're going to make them look a little bit, it's going to drastically change the look and the feel of the face. It's going to change the age, it's going to change kind of the personality of the person a little bit. Uh, you may see uh, very subtle changes can dynamically change the feel uh, of a person. We actually uh, have uh, spots in our brain specific or a spot in the brain specifically devoted to the human face like what, how registering uh, what the human face is communicating whether the emotion is fear compassion kindness happiness joy uh, pain whatever it might be that the face is communicating we actually have a part in our brain to pick up on those subtle uh, signals and so when you're drawing a face and you, let's say you, you shade this in a little bit more, the brain is going to pick that up as an emotion coming across. Like maybe now he looks more drowsy than he did a second ago. And so these little subtle things that are happening uh, that, that can dynamically change the look and the feel of a person, uh, they are a result partially of how we read facial expressions. And I've heard, I read in a book that if that part of your brain is damaged, uh, that reads facial expressions, you can actually see everything else. Um, like you could see a person's, the rest of their body, but when you look at their face, it would look like they had a stocking pulled over their face because that part of your brain that reads facial expressions and uh, can identify with that being damaged, it literally uh, doesn't allow you to see faces, which I find extremely difficult to believe, but I read it in a book. All right, for those of you who don't know, I am the creator of The Legend of Harapan, and uh, this is the book. So if you get a chance, you can check it out. Uh, you can go to thelegendofharapan.com, and you can see the first eight pages for free, and you can also purchase it there. Uh, also, in the upcoming month or so, uh, it will be available on Comixology, uh, in iTunes, and uh, on Amazon for the Kindle. So uh, make sure you check it out. Thanks.